the Palestinian cause and the, and, and the people over there. His, you know, just expressing some, you know, basic things of his identity. And then, he was attacked by the media. They wrote, wrote some vicious articles calling him like bigot, anti-Semite, all these types of things, just for expressing those views. The other thing that happened is, just recently on the news, as you, you turn on the TV, and you just see like the abandon in which commentators and news people just talk about Islam. There's a guy on Fox News. His name is Bob Beckel. And this guy is supposed to be the, the liberal one. He's supposed to be the one, you know, for openness and tolerance and all these types of things. Talking about how we should prevent Muslims from building a masjid, any masjid, no matter where it is, until we can verify individually how each one of us are terrorists or not. Stop all foreign students from their visas and everything from Muslim countries based on whether or not we can ascertain if they're terrorists or not. He apologized. The guy apologized the next day. He said he went a little bit, he might have went too far. And then, but in his apologies, he said, well, but the Muslims, they don't talk about, you know, the attacks on churches and the attacks on Christian schools and whatnot in their countries, which is not true. But, I mean, this is what the, the challenges that we face. And then, as you know, internationally and in anywhere you go, there's the, the rise of Islamophobia. And the, and the way that they talk about Muslims associating them with terrorism, associating them with backwardness, always when they talk about Islam or somebody trying to be Muslim or, you know, it, coming at a societal level, it's, it's the focus is on women's rights and those types of things. So as, just as a Muslim, it's, it's, it's a very challenging environment. Islam is you know, under siege in, in certain respects in, in where we go. The other thing is even outside of Islam, morality and kind of connecting to God is being attacked as well. I mean, you look recently and, and the way that um, with the, the Supreme Court rulings and kind of what's going on, it's just... This, this idea of having shame and kind of having some type of value and restraint and you know, control of who we are and you know, what our passions take us to is also being attacked. It's almost, if you tell somebody, you know, have some restraint, you're viewed as a bigot or you're viewed as, you know, as, a, as something negative, as that's a backwards thing. You're talking about things that in the past, in a modern era, and you know, it's time to be open and free and just express yourselves and just be out there. So even in that level, and this is something that even Muslims, non-Muslims, anybody who is living a traditional moral lifestyle is facing under. So faith is being tested. And then beyond that, just the religious stuff and the morality stuff and things that are going on out there. Our daily lives, things that we face on a daily basis. We're burdened. Look at the economy. I mean, you look at recently, we're still at a very historically high level of unemployment and the jobs available and what's out there in terms of opportunities isn't that great. It's about 7.6% right now and that doesn't even talk about the, 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 the real jobs, the full-time jobs, the jobs that people can sustain their families on. There's this... Um, you know, just, just the way that, you know, society is, it's challenging. What are the values that are talking out there? You know, do anything to make money, sell anything, sell your dignity, sell your shame, sell anything for money. And if you make money, that's a good thing. You, you, you're successful. You know, shame is something that, you know, haya and things like that is, you know, that's an inhibitor to your freedom. That's something that you have to get away with. Leave all your shame. Be shameless. That's good. That's you're being free. That's expressing yourself. If you need to get ahead and advance yourself, everybody is either a positive or a negative. They either help you or they hurt you. And you want to be the one who's on the top. So do whatever it takes to be powerful. Do whatever it takes to get position. Do whatever it takes to get celebrity. And that's the, that's the challenges. And then and just basically with the constraint and what it takes to just get by, to earn a decent living for our families and to, for ourselves and to succeed and to kind of live a lifestyle that is just passable.
just bearable, just so that, you know, we're not worried about the food on the table. We're not worried about, you know, getting education and all those types of things. It's difficult, and that leaves really no time and very little ability and capacity to remember and reflect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and kind of develop the type of relationship and that connection that we need. So it's pretty, pretty depressing. It's pretty bleak. But subhanAllah, this is, this is an opportunity. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we live in this time. And that He put us here in this time and this place. This is truly a blessing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have put us in this place unless we had the capacity to deal with it. So be aware and be thankful because you are here. You have come here. It is Jummah. It is hot. It is hot in this room. But we are here. We are here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called us to remember Him and we came. And that's a good thing. This is a time, if you think about it, like you look at like startups, you're at the ground floor. And the opportunity out there and the blessings that are out there is immense and it's waiting for you to take advantage of it. It's waiting for you to, 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 to go out there and grab. And we all have the capacity to do that. We all have the capacity to change ourselves, improve ourselves, better ourselves, become better, more impactful people. We have the opportunity to improve our families and develop good relationships and have good friends and all that type of stuff. Develop strong communities and really have an impact in society. What's out there, the situation that I just described, it's in flux. Things come and they go, they change and they move. But we are in a position to alter that and have that positive benefit and that outcome. So, so believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be, be happy that He has placed you with that offer, uh, that, that, that idea. And even more important than that, and even better than that, this is the month of Ramadan. Of all the times, when we talk of opportunity, what does opportunity mean? Favorable time, good fortune. Of all the times, all the places, this is the time. In the hadith of Abu Hurairah who said, when the month of Ramadan comes, the gates of paradise are open, and the gates of the hellfire are closed, and the devils are chained. So number one, whether or not, I mean, you know, you can say what this means necessarily doesn't mean that there's no influence, there's a little bit of it, but it's constrained. So this is the opportunity to do better. That, that force that's pushing you back and holding you back, it's lessened. Take advantage of it. Number two, the temptations are less. You can see it easier. If you're seeing something on the street, it's easier to turn your gaze. If you're presented with doing something to, to lie or something in whatever situations that we face, it's easier to say no to that. Because that, 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 that call, that waswasa is gone. Or limited. The other hadith that I'd like to talk about and really kind of focus and go through in the meaning of it is this, the other, another hadith of Abu Hurairah about Ramadan as well. And that every deed of the son of Adam will be multiplied, i.e. in this month. A hasana will be multiplied to 10 times its life, up to 700 times its life. I, it's, 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 it's innumerable what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do for you in this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, except for fasting, it is for me. So when we fast, it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I shall reward it. And he, and he who gives up his desires and his food for my sake, the fasting person will have two moments of joy. The joy when he breaks his fast and the joy when he meets his Lord. And indeed the smell of his mouth is better to Allah than the fragrance of musk. From that we get, of course, is that the barakah, the opportunity, is innumerable, it's immense, it's there, take it. The other thing is that the ability to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Throughout the year, between the last Ramadan and now, we have all gone through our path, we've all made our mistakes, we've all done X, Y, and Z. 
we said something to the person X, somebody did something to us, whatever it might be. This is the time to forgiveness. This is the time to seek forgiveness, to draw close to Allah Subhanahu to remember Him. And that's, and that's where it is. It's the first thing is, is to kind of get to know ourselves and kind of the strength of our relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month to do that. And the thing is, is that as we go through fasting, what we understand is it puts us through extremes. When we're hungry, we're tired, we're anxious, whatever it might be, our body, our mind, our psyche is put from here to there. So we really get to know about ourselves and get a baseline of who we are, what our relationship with Allah SWT is, where our character flaws are, what our character strengths are. And the other thing is in, in terms of this month, is that we really need, we really get to get become closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. When you don't have food for the whole day, Subhanallah. You, no matter what you eat at fasting, whether it's a samosa or biryani or a date or milk, whatever it is, that is the best tasting food you've ever had. If you miss coffee for one day, Subhanallah, you're like, wow. I'm never going to do that again. Make sure you get up and drink that coffee. Whatever it is, the fact that you have a family, if you're married, you have a wife who gives you food and prepares it for you. And be merciful. And, you know, we should be less demanding on them or, you know, on our, our families in this time as well. That everybody needs to participate in Ramadan. But when, when that comes in, the blessings and the joy, and then finally, like the community. You go out there, you're meeting people that you've never met before. You've met, you're making friends that you've never made before. You're expanding your horizons. This is the blessing. This is what happens in the time of Ramadan. And so this is what we have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa What favors He's bestowed upon us. And that we should remain thankful for Him for giving that to us. And reflect on that. And then we increase our ibadah, we increase our, our, our siyam, and we find, the other thing about Ramadan is we find time to do things that we've never done before. We make it a point to go to the masjid on a daily basis. We make it a point to fast, to increase our dhikr and all these things. So hopefully these are things that we carry on in, in, in our lives. And so I'll leave that for now, for right now. With that, in, inshallah, we'll conclude in the second two. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعليه وصحبه أجمعين. So as, as we kind of conclude, I'd like to leave this with you. And that's in that Surah Asr. I mean, we talk about this a lot, and this is this is just a reminder. And the fact in that in that it gives us the rubric of what what we need to do as Muslims. This is well asked in the insan and the fiqhusr illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasul bil haqqi wa tawasul bil sabr And that very basically the essence of what the surah is telling you is that for you as a human being to be successful you have to not only have faith develop that connection with Allah subhanahu wa strengthen it but that faith should translate into action that you do good deeds that your connection to Allah SWT, your awareness of Allah SWT has a tangible impact on the daily lives, or your daily life. But then it says it's not, you're not alone. You have to help others as well. You have to reach out. You have to go out into the community. And you have to be positive. The loss of the haqq the loss of the sabr. Bring them to the truth and the patience and the and, and constancy. Go out. And this is the month to do that. You're in the communities, you're coming to the masjids, you're gonna listen to good scholars, you're gonna listen to good speakers, all the good things are gonna happen.
seize that opportunity to grow, to get connected to the com community. Some of us, subhanAllah, come from very good backgrounds. We either have a lot of money, we either have good jobs, and we have a lot of skills, we have a lot of talents. Bring that to the community. Build it, establish it, institutionalize it. We have the power to change all those things that are out there. We have the power where people will come up and stand up for us, represent us, stand up for our cause, become brothers and sisters with us. Whether they believe in Islam or not, they will come and support you. For every story that I said that was bad, there's a positive example out there. It's not all bad, but that positive example is because people like us stand up and go out and we deliver the message. And we call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we work together and we work as a community and we work for the betterment of society. Focusing on what the people's needs are, understanding them, listening them to them, so that we can provide a better, better aspect for them and better avenues for them. And not only talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but living the example that, that the Prophet has set for us and living it in a way that people can respond to. So on that note, I'll conclude the khutbah, inshallah. Please forgive me for any shortcomings, and also please forgive me for being late. Um, may Allah SWT forgive me for my fault, and may Allah SWT guide us on the path. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barakana fi man atayt, wa kina wa sifa anna sarra ma qadayt, fa inna ka taqdi bil haqqi wa la yuqda alayk, wa inna hu la yadillu ma walayt, ولا يعز من عديت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة كن يذاب النار اللهم تقبل صيامنا اللهم تقبل قيامنا اللهم تقبل صلاتنا اللهم تقبل لقوعنا اللهم تقبل سجودنا اللهم تقبل دعانا may Allah subhanahu wa taala make this a month of blessing make this a month that we become closer to Him. Make us a month in which we become closer to the Qur'an. Make this a month where we develop habits that we'll carry out through this year. Make this a month where we develop stronger relationships with our families and our friends and our communities. And make this a month where we, where we give us strength and independence and forbearance to live and follow His way and give us the strength to carry His message to those around us. May Allah SWT forgive us for all our sins and forgive us for all our shortcomings and forgive us for anything that we've done wrong or anything that we've done wrong for anybody else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a month where we establish the community, where we establish this masjid and we establish his name in this land. I mean, Allahumma salli ya Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa